Hey what's up guys, back again with another video in the Spigot series. This time we're gonna make a armor stand GUI plugin. I be posted up in park, fumes coming out my shit exhaust, yellow lights just beaming on that gravel spot when no one's up. My glove box got beamed by the fit, blood look big like L Smith. My CEO drinks on my range, cause I'm like trash, they hit it big. They say I sound like kid rock. Alright guys, so now that we have a good understanding of how to make GUIs and armor stands, let's go ahead and make a plugin in which you can make armor stands and do a bunch of cool stuff with a GUI so it's gonna we're gonna fuse the two things that we just learned and make something really cool hopefully okay so this video might be like two or three parts because because it's gonna be a pretty big plugin so but we'll see so let's just get right into it okay so let me add the package here and let's just call it um, we'll call it armor stand GUI so the first thing I want to do is make an events in package uh, I mean events and commands package so that we can have our events and, pack and commands in separate packages just so we can provide some structure here for our thing here so new package commands and then new package events just like that let's get rid of this we don't need this and we could say uh, plugin has started up all right and so what we need to do first is make a new command and this will be a command that opens our GUI so the way we're going to structure this is whenever they type slash um, armor stand it's going to open up a GUI and then there's going to be a bunch of options okay and some of the options might be to create a new armor stand and then it's going to take them to another GUI which they can use to create the armor stand okay so we're going to have multi multiple um, uh, GUIs like menus inside of the main menu and so this command will be making our main menu open okay so it's going to be pretty cool so let's try this out so we'll call it armor stand command this is going to be the armor stand command that opens the main GUI okay and one of the options besides creating an armor stand will be closing the armor stand menu so closing this main menu that it's about to open so that's just another example oh wrong thing command executor okay public on command return false all right so once they type this command, we want to check and see if the person who typed it is a player because consoles can't open a GUI, of course. That doesn't make sense. So the first thing we want to do, um, well, actually before that, is to make an instance of player. I know we've done, we've done this like a million times, but at least you're getting a lot of practice, hopefully, if you're coding along with me. And so, yeah, now that we have our, um, you know, all this check, so now that we checked all this here, we can actually start making the the GUI and then open the GUI to the player because that's what the command is going to do. So let's create the inventory which is going to hold our GUI. So we'll just call it main menu. Let's import inventory. So main menu is going to be bucket.create inventory and then we're going to use player because you got to provide the owner of the inventory. It's just going to be the player that executes it. And so this is going to be a small menu because it's just the main menu where you select which menu you want to go to. So we'll keep it at nine slots. Pretty simple. And then we want a title so let's give it a title. So We'll use chat color dot blue. Uh, we need to import chat color, I think. But all right, there you go. So chat color blue, and we'll say armor stand GUI. All right, cool. So that's going to be our main menu. Inside of our main menu, we're going to have some options, which are going to be the items that represent, you know, the options. So our first one is going to be create. So I'm stack create. And this will be the option that allows the user to create a new armor stand. So let's make it a, a new item stack. And so let's make it a armor stand since we're this since this will be the option that lets them create an armor stand. Let's just make the item appear as an item, uh, as an armor stand. And so now let's edit the items by adding adding a meta here. Item meta. I'll we'll call it create meta. Is equal to new. Cre oh wait, not new. It'd be create dot get meta. There we go. So now we can change the you know properties of this set display name. We'll just say chat color green. I'll call it create. And so now let's give it a description so the user knows what it does. So array list string uh, create lore is equal to new um, new array list. There we go. So that's going to create a new array list here. And we can add on to it by doing create lore add and this will add a new string to it and we'll just say um, let's see here we'll do chat color purple we'll do let's do dark purple actually 
and create a new armor stand. So this will of course be the description for our button here or our, or our item here. So that will describe what it's going to do of course in the menu. And so now that we've finished all that, let's add it to our adder lore and then add the meta to our item, okay? So to do that we do create meta dot add lore or set lore and then create lore. And then we could add the meta. So I'll do create dot set meta and then we could say create meta. Just like that, okay? So that's gonna do all that. So now we have a first item here. And so now let's add a second item, which is gonna be our close button. That's gonna close the menu in case they don't wanna choose anything. So we'll say option uh, options for main menu. Yeah, so under that we want the second item. Item stack close is equal to new item stack material dot barrier. There you go. So that's gonna do that for us. If you don't know what the barrier is, it's just an item that appears as a what's it called? The it's that sign, there's a circle with the line going through it. I forgot what that's called, but it's basically that. That's what it looks like. You'll see. And so let's give it some metadata. Alright, so we set everything up for those two options. And so now what we want to do. So now the next logical step is to add these items to our main menu, or our inventory in this case. So we could do main menu dot add items. Let's add one. Th let's add them. At, uh, let's add them one at a time so we can choose what slot that we want them to appear in. So we'll add the first one, the create menu option or create uh, armor stand option to the first slot. So it'd be zero because it's like an index. So, and then we'll just put create. So we put like that. Uh, looks like we did it wrong. Let's see here. Control P. Oh wait, wrong thing. We want to do set item. And then we can choose what slot we want it to be in. So create just like that. And then we could add the second one. Main menu dot set item. Uh, and so we want the last slot, so we'll just put eight and then we put the close button or item in there. So now all those items are added to our menu, so we want to show the player the menu finally. So player dot open inventory. And then we just plug in main inventory or main menu right there. So yeah, that's just gonna make a main menu inventory and then just show it to the player, okay? And so that's what that command is gonna do. So let's test it out by registering the command. So we wanna do uh, git server dot git plugin manager dot register, wait, no, wrong thing. That's for events. We want to git command armor stand dot set executor new armor stand command like that. And finally, we want to register in our plugin.yml also. So we'll do that. Commands, armor stand, uh, description, uh, create a, yeah, create a armor stand. And we'll give it some usage. And we'll give it some usage. So command, and then we'll give it some alias. We'll just say, uh, um, let's see here, as, short for armor stand. So there we go. So that's it that. So now we can test it out by compiling the plugin here. So we click that, the play button, and I'll be right back. All right, so we're in the server now. I added my plugin to my plugins folder inside of my server so we can go ahead and test it out. So we'll do slash AS, which is the alias I set. And as you can see here, it opens up our GUI. Awesome. So we get our close button and then we have our create button and it says create a new armor stand. So when we click this, nothing happens and we can move it around and then same for this one. So the next step to actually add that part will be to make an event where we can make it so that they can't, it'll cancel the click every time like we did last episode where um, they can't, you know, take the items, stuff like that. And then after that, we want to make it so that it uh, adds functionality to our buttons so we can do stuff whenever they click buttons. Oh, that's a llama. Cool. So anyway, we're going to do that now. So let's jump right into it. We're going to need to make a new uh, what's called, uh, class in our commands package here. We'll just call it menu handler. So it's going to handle all the menu stuff whenever they click on the menu and everything like that. So that's what we'll call it. And then it's going to implement listener just like every time. And there we go. All right. So we're going to make a new event here, events handler. And uh, let's see, public void on menu click. And we'll say event inventory click events e okay and so the first thing we need to do 
is probably check and see what menu they clicked on in the first place, right? Because we're gonna have multiple menus, like I said. So let's go ahead and try that out. So we want to see. Um, well, let's get a player instance so first. So player dot. Uh, wait. Uh, there we go. So player player equals e, e dot get who clicked, and we get an error here because on the right side the get who clicked event it returns a uh, human entity. Uh, object so we can pretty much just cast it because a human entity is a player pretty much just this pretty much the same thing so we can just cast it like that and so now that we have a reference to player we can use that in the future so the first thing we want to do is go ahead and check and see like I said which menu they clicked on so we can use an if statement for that let's do e .get click inventory so that will get the inventory that the person clicked on and then let's get the title of that inventory so we can figure out which one they clicked on and see if that inventory is equal to this inventory. So let's just make a constant here, or not a constant, let's just, yeah, we can use a constant. So final string, and this will be the name of our inventory. So we'll do main menu equal, and we'll just list all our inventories here since we're gonna have multiple menus and everything. So we'll say menus, menu list, how about that, okay? So this will be our first one. So if we go back here, we can just copy the name of what we set it to be right here. So this will be our main menu. All right, so we can just do something like that and there we go so that's going to import it and so now we have our main menu uh, string set here so we can just say if the inventory we clicked on dot title is equal to main menu that obviously means that we're using the main menu right and so what we want to do now that we're using the main menu is check and see what button they clicked on right so we'll try that out so switch and the thing that we're going to be checking is e dot get current item oops e dot get current item no not that get current item and then get type so this will get the material like we did last episode and now we want to have a bunch of cases so we can test it's basically like a if statement of course so we check and see which one we clicked on so case the first one in our menu of course is armor stand so we want to check and see if we clicked armor stand so if they do click armor stand we want to do player dot send message um, opened armor stand create menu all right so that will happen when we do that and then we want to close the menu probably, so we could just do uh, e.get, or no, we'll do player.close inventory. And then next logical step will be to open a new inventory, open the armor stand inventory. And that's something we're going to do next uh, episode, okay? So we'll save that for next episode, but once they do that, we want to break so we can add the next condition or next test here. So if they don't click the armor stand, maybe they click the barrier, right? Because that's our other item that we have. So if they click the barrier, then we want to do player.send message, closing main menu. All right. And then we want to do player.close inventory. So that will do that. And then let's break. And if, if they don't click any of them, which is going to be our default, uh, default, then we want to say uh, nothing. We'll just see a break just like that. I pretty much, I don't think you even have to have that because nothing's going to happen. So, yeah, there we go. So, um, that's going to check and see what uh, what inventory they clicked on. So, that's important because we're going to have multiple inventories. And so, once we figure out that we clicked on the main menu, we want to check and see which button they clicked on in the main menu, okay? And so, if they click Armor Stand, we're going to open up the Armor Stand inventory menu or Armor Stand menu. And then, if they click the barrier, that means they just want to close it, of course, because the barrier is the item we chose to represent closing the inventory, okay? And so that should do all of that. So what we want to do now is register this in our main, um, what's it called, event uh, class class. So get server dot get plugin manager dot register events new armor stand or no uh, what's it called menu handler. There we go. And then we want to say this for our main class. And so that will register it for us. But something I want to do real quick is, as you can see here in our other co in our command here, we have this all of this code here is going to be what we use to create the main menu and then open it. So why don't we just make this into a method, okay? So we can provide more structure to our, uh, what's it called, our, our program, right? Our plugin. So we'll make the menu. Uh, so we'll make the menu method inside of our main class here, so we can use that to open it wherever we want to. Because if you think about it, we're not just going to be opening the main menu inside of this with this command, right? We might want to use the main menu inside of this event too, because what if they select? Um, an option in one of our inventories like open the armor stand menu and let's say there's an option inside of our armor stand menu that says go back to main 
go back to main menu, right? So we're gonna be we're gonna need to be able to call upon the main menu, okay? So what we would want to do is make it so that they can access the op open main menu um, method inside of you know everywhere. So we can do that with a method made in the main class, right? So public void. Oh wait, we want nope. Go back. Public void will say open main menu. That's what we'll call it. And so now we'll put the code inside of here. And of course, player doesn't know what player is, so we can just provide that as an argument here, uh, a parameter. So player, player, and there we go, right? So now we'll go back to our command here, and we want to access that. So we'll do open menu, but we can't access it, right? So what we want to do is make a reference to the main class. So armor stand UI, plugin, and then we'll add our thingy here. So code, generate, constructor, and it made it in the wrong place, I think. No, it didn't. I just put that in the wrong place. All right, and then we need to add that as a parameter. So armor stand UI plugin, and then this dot plugin is equal to plugin. And if you don't know what the heck I'm doing, just watch watch my other videos so you can get an understanding. Okay. So anyway, so now that we have a reference to the main class, we want to go back to our main class and then provide this as a parameter so that they don't send the main class over to the armor stand command class. Um, so now we can do it. So we could go back to our class here, and then we could do uh, plugin dot open main menu, and then we could just provide player as a parameter. So what that's going to do is open the main menu onto player. Okay, so that's all that's going to do. So now we don't have to repeat code next time we want to open the main menu and say one of these classes, right? So we can provide a main class reference here also. So we'll say uh, let's see here, understand GUI plugin. And then we can make a reference generate constructor boom uh, boom yeah okay there we go and so now we can open the open up the main menu inside of here in the future but dang it we opened it up in the wrong class that's what I didn't mean to I didn't mean to do that I meant to do it in this class here boom so that's gonna make that there and we need to change this to menu handler all right, so it's going to do all that for us. Hopefully, that's not too confusing. It's just going to allow us to access this method uh, method here from the main class. Okay, the open main menu method. So we'll put all of our menus inside of here, so we can access them with access them wherever we want to. Okay. So anyway, now that we have all that, let's just go ahead and test this out, so we can see if the user was able to click the two options right and see if this stuff happens right. So I'll be right back. Oh yeah, we've got to do something. We have to send the parameter here so we'll put this inside of here and then we'll, that'll fix that so let me restart here all right we're back so we'll do this command here and it says as down there for some reason i don't know why it's doing that let me go back oh yeah we need to return true instead of false so let's fix that let's test this out now so we'll click close and now it closes the menu and then it says closing main menu okay so that part works so open it up again now we click this and now it says opening Oh, opened armor stand create menu okay so now next episode we're going to create that menu so now whenever they click that option it'll take them to the armor stand create menu which is going to be the hard part because we're going to be making a whole menu that allows them to do a bunch of stuff like create armor stands and have a bunch of options okay so that'd be fun that would be real fun so um hopefully you understand what we did today if you don't understand what we did you can pretty much just go watch my other videos the inventories video and also last episode which was the gui video where i taught you how to make guis and stuff like that and also my armor stand video which is we're gonna which is what we're gonna be doing la next episode so we're gonna go over armor stand stuff again to uh put inside of our plugin okay so hopefully you um understood what we did today um if you have any questions about what we did you could ask a question in the comment section I'll be glad to help you. Or you can join our Discord, which is a, there's a link in the description for you. So if you want to join that, you can join it, hang out with us, ask questions, whatever you want to do. Um, but also we have the code from today's episode, which is also very important because you can see everything we did with a little bit of an explanation along with it. So in case you forget how to do some things, you can look back and see what we did, okay? So yeah, if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.